As we uh, transition here, we're not going to dismiss the kids to church. Kids are going to hang out with us today on these stay and plays. Um, but we have, we have some really, a lot of fun things that we're going to do this morning. Um, and I'm going to need a lot of help this morning from all of you. I'm going to need help from some of the kids. So if you're ready to help me in just a moment, I'm going to be taking some volunteers. Um, and uh, I'm going to need help from some adults to do, to do some things too. But you don't know that you're going to be picked because the kids are going to do that. So we're going to surprise you a little bit with some of this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about baptism. And uh, in order to do that, I just I have this picture I want to show you guys real quick. And so I'm just going to come to my buddy John here. Uh, John, can you tell me who's in that picture? God. Because God. <laughs> God is everywhere. I get it. Okay, Rex. So I don't know if you guys can see this picture right here. So he says, that's me. Is that me? Can you concur? Okay. Um, what's going on in this picture? What can you conclude from this picture? Rex is fishing. Rex is fishing. Okay. Does everybody else concur with that? Okay. We have ev- okay. What evidence do you have that Rex is fishing in this picture? The fishing pole in his hand. The fishing pole in his hand. You are a bright young man. This is, I'm glad I picked the right guy. Okay. I have a fishing pole in my hand, but does it matter where you're standing with a fishing pole? I am right by the river. Yes, I am. So I'm at the river. I have a fishing pole. So we've, we've come to the conclusion that I'm fishing in this picture. Okay. Anything else about this picture that, that you want to mention? <clears throat> the scenery is beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> what else do you want to mention? Nice <clears throat> sunglasses. <clears throat> the sunglasses are nice. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? What a handsome guy. Let me just go ahead and help you out here. And just help you out with that. Yeah, okay, so you're right. And I think, is that Robertson's Bridge? Do you it know? Looks like it looks it. like it, yeah. I think I am fishing on the other side of Robertson's Bridge. Well, I guess either side is the other side, right? Because it's a bridge. It goes like, I didn't think that one out before I said it. And so here's the deal. This picture gives evidence to the fact that I have been fishing before on the Rogue River. And that's true. It's a true statement. It, it, okay, it's because you can't see the other side of the fishing pole, okay? Wise guy, who invited you? I don't know. That's right. Thank you, John, for your backup on that one. And so here's the thing. Baptism is also a picture, evidence that somebody has says yes to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. And that's the wonderful part about baptism. It's this public confession, saying, I follow Jesus. He is Lord of my life. I have reached out to him for forgiveness of sin. He has reached down and he has forgiven me. And I'm saying yes to him and following him all the days of my life. And so baptism is a wonderful example and symbol of that. How many of you ever been to a wedding before? Okay. Um, What happens at a wedding? Kind of give me some things, throw them out there. You cry. cry? (laughs) (laughs) says a single man in the back row. I'm kidding. (laughs) Sorry, James. I just had to go there. I don't know why you were crying, but that's the first thing that came to my mind. The second would be it's a very touching moment, right? Yeah. Sorry. I love you, James. You know that, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else happens at a wedding? You give your life away. Did you say give? Sign? Sign your life away. Okay. All right. What else happens? Say it again. Vows. Oh, how did you know that's where I was headed with this? Thank you so much. There's vows that happen, right? We have vows, the I do's, I promise, I commit to. And I think this, these, I'm messing with these speakers. I'm going to back up a little bit because they're starting to squeak a little bit. Um, that's right. Now there's another vow that happens too. The ring vow, right? The rings are exchanged and they're, in, they're a representation of the vows that they have just taken together in front of God and in front of the the people there. And, um, and then at the end of it, what happens at the end? They kiss. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. And then they turn around, face their family and friends. And then the, the uh, officiate says, I want to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. And, uh, and they, they walk off. And then the DJ hits the song. Boom, boom, boom. Shka, another one bites the... And so, and then they just keep... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But let's go back to the vows for a second. 
during the vows, they exchange these words, and they're basically making public the love they've had between the two of them. They're just, they're going public with it. We are in love, and we're making a commitment with everyone here that we are staying together, that we are committed to each other as husband and wife. And the rings are a symbol of that. So fast forward five years, and that man looks down at his hand and sees that ring. He goes, hey, you know what that means? That means that I'm married. That means I belong to my wife, my wife belongs to me, and we're committed to each other. And it also tells everybody else around, sorry, ladies, this man is taken, right? Because it's a reminder of the vows they have taken. It's a symbol, a powerful symbol of that commitment. Baptism is also a, com- is a symbol. It's a symbol of the commitment to follow Jesus and to honor him with your life and move forward in that. It's a wonderful thing. Now, I need some help from some kids. This is where I need some help. I need uh, one, two, three, um, four, five. So five kids, okay? I have um, one, Atlas, come up here. And is that your, that's your sister with you, right? Okay, what's your sister's name? Opal. Opal, you want to come up here with me too? All right, uh, let's see. I've got um, Zane come up here and uh, Jubilee. Um, and then in the back, the green shorts, gray shirt. Yeah, I don't know your name, but come on up here, bud. All right. You know, um, Atlas, you did such a great job as our mic guy last time. Do you want to be the mic guy again? Sure. Okay, so here's one thing. We can't get too close to these speakers. So when you have it, just don't go right up to them. But last time you did great. So hold on to that for a second. Now, here's what I need from you guys. Uh-oh. Where's my scriptures? They must have fallen out. Okay, um, I have my own mic, but oh. just a minute, yeah. So <laughs> I left, does somebody want to go look for those? And hold on a second, let me, before I send somebody to my office. I have, anybody want to go to my office for me? Okay, thank you. I can't walk in front of that speaker, it's going to squeal. There's, um, there's pieces of paper that have scriptures on them, they're all close together. I don't know where they went. Okay, so we're going, to have them, we're going to have somebody read a scripture for us. Um, but I do have, we can read the first one because it's in here. So Zane, you're my number one guy. I want you to take my notes, but I need it back. And I want you to go find somebody who's going to read this scripture out of Romans 6, 3 through 4. So go find anybody you want. Um, let's go with anybody, you know, 16 or over, okay? And Atlas, you're going to follow him because they're going to read. All right, so here we go. They're going to read into the microphone for us. You picked the same guy that's dressed just like me. Really? Okay. Wait, which one am I uh, Number one on the bottom left. Okay. We were joined with Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus in baptism. We joined him in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Romans 6, 3, and 4. Awesome. Thank you very much. Give it up for our reader. Okay. Good job reading. Whoa, yes. I'll give that to you. I'll give that to you. And um, thank you. Hold on to that one just a second. Okay. So let's talk about number one, and then you guys are going to go give those pieces of paper to somebody else to read in just a minute, okay? So he just read Romans 6, 3 through 4 that says, We are joined with Christ Jesus in baptism. We are joined with Jesus. Now, there's a beautiful symbolism that happens when we join with Jesus in baptism. When possible, we baptize by immersion. That means being dunked underwater, okay? Now, the coolest part about this is that when the person goes down into the water, we're joined with Christ through his death. So it's as if we go down to the Christ's death, but when we come back up, it's as if we join Jesus in his resurrection. And that's a wonderful thing about the symbolism of baptism, is that it joins us and unites us with Christ because Christ lived, died for our sins, but then rose again on the third day. I don't think she likes microphones very much. Okay, so here's what I need for you guys to do. Um, if you have a piece of paper, go find somebody and give them that piece of paper, and when it's time for them to read that one, then Atlas is going to go to them, okay? What's that? Yes, anybody 16 or over would be great. 
Go ahead and find somebody, and then you guys can go back to your seats except for my mic guy. My guy, you can hang out with me. Is that okay? All right. So that's what baptism is all about. Now, actually, you know what? We have something else we need to do. Let me, let me hold that mic for a moment. And I, I want to show you guys something pretty cool. Okay. Now, about baptism. Baptism, the water of baptism doesn't... Actually, will you guys want to stay up here and help me with something? Okay. This is really cool. So, in fact, if there's any other kids that want to come up, I'm going to show you something pretty, pretty cool. You're welcome to come up here and check it out. What's that? This is not a chair. Can we what? Um, no, we're not going to choose a kid. We're just going to... Oh, hi, Faith. How are you? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. It is not root beer. Okay. So what does this first container of water say? Okay, this is going to represent Jesus. Here's what we're after, guys. So um, and what is this middle container? It says sin, right? This represents sin. And then this container of water represents you. us, you and me, right? Okay, so here's the deal. When we are baptized, there's nothing special about that water in there. That water does not save us. Baptism is a symbol that Jesus Christ saves us. So everybody say, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. So when we are baptized in that water, it's not that there's anything special about this water. It's that Jesus saves us. And so here's the thing. God made us. In his image. We are all created in his image. This is going to represent you guys, you and me, everyone in the world. But here's the thing. There is sin in the world. And what happens is we sin against God. We do something that is not a part of God's plan. And you know what happens to us? Sin comes into our lives. And I know, it makes it all nasty. Huh, it looks gross. Because... Because sin is, sin is gross, right? And it just changes us into the things, our attitudes and behaviors and thoughts in a way that that's not, God doesn't design for us. That's not what God wants for us, right? But here's the cool thing. Jesus alone saves. Jesus alone forgives. Jesus is the only one who can forgive. Baptism water doesn't forgive. Nothing else saves except for who? Jesus. Jesus. And so when we ask Jesus into our life, you know what he starts doing? Scripture says not only does Jesus forgive us of our sins, but it says that he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Look at that. Whoa. Isn't that cool? Now, let me just show everybody what Jesus does to our lives. He begins the process of uh, purifying us because Jesus alone saves, and he's the only one that does that. Now, here's the coolest part is that Jesus doesn't just forgive you and me and the people here in this town, but Jesus has forgives everybody everywhere because, do you know why? He is more powerful than sin. And Jesus was on this earth. He lived, he was tempted, but he never sinned. He was perfect. Isn't that cool? Jesus is the only one who can sin. I mean, he's the only one who can not sin. Whoa, let me, let me back that up. Yep, because Jesus is the only one who can forgive us of our sins. He is so powerful, in fact. Ask me, how powerful is Jesus? How powerful is Jesus? I never thought you'd ask, but thank you for asking me. He's so powerful that he reigns forever and ever, and there is nothing that can overcome our Lord. In fact, he proved that on the third day after he died. What did he do? He rose again. He's the strongest thing in the universe. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, but you said it better than I did. And so because of that, nothing, nothing at all can defeat our Lord Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on. Yeah. All right. You guys can all have a seat now. You guys are doing great. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So only Jesus forgives us of our sins. What a powerful thing. Now, when we take the step of baptism, we also join in with the family of God. We join the family of God. So now somebody has um, verse number two. Let me make sure this is on. Who has verse number two? Raise your hand if you have number two right there in front of you. Oh, you know those guys or gals. 
So you would you please read verse number two? This is Galatians 3, 25 through 26. For all, for are all children of God through faith in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Awesome. Galatians 3, 25. Thank you very much. Wonderful job. Let's give it up for our reader. It says, for you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We are a part of the body of Christ. You know what's great about baptism is that you join the church family, not just with others who have been baptized in this church, but you join in those who have been baptized in churches across town. In fact, um, the Church of the Valley is, is a... Is, is a um, the Christian churches in this valley come together and we want to continue to declare the name of the Lord and move forward in ministry. And I got an email, in fact, Josh Johnson, he's our uh, director overseer of Church of the Valley. He sent out an email and the new pastor of Redwood Community Church, no, Redwood Christian Church, thank you. He shared a praise that four people, I believe, four people were baptized at their church just recently. So those who are being baptized today or have been baptized before join that church family, even at another denomination. You know, people in other parts of the world, they might be baptized today and we join together as a part of the family of God. I love that, that we are children through faith in Jesus. And uh, what a powerful thing. Now, here's the thing. Who should be baptized? Well, those who call on the name of the Lord, who say yes to him. In fact, Jesus calls us to baptize those who follow him. Somebody has verse number three. Who has verse number three? All right, there we go. Would you head on back there so Elaine can read that for us? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Matthew 28, 29 through 30. Thank you very much, Elaine. Appreciate that. So Jesus says, I want you to go and I want you to make disciples and I want you to baptize them in my name. And then I want you to teach them. It's a part of the discipleship process. It's what we do as a church. And here's the last one is baptism is a celebration. Baptism is a celebration. Um, when somebody gets married, and we talked about being at a wedding ceremony, at the end, when they turn around and after the kiss and somebody announces them, what does everybody do normally? They cheer. They cheer. They're, Woo-hoo. Yeah, they clap, right? Because it's an exciting celebration. Well, it's the same with baptism. When somebody comes to know the Lord Jesus as Savior, and many times if it happens here in this service, we honor the Lord, we praise him, we give glory to him, we celebrate what's going on. And baptism is a wonderful celebration of what Jesus is doing in the life of other people. Just to show you that how important celebration is in heaven, Jesus is sharing these parables about the lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost son. Do you remember these parables? Well, I want to remind you what he says at the end of these parables. So the lost son, the prodigal son, he goes, he squanders his money, comes back. The dad, of course, forgives him, wraps his arms around him, throws a big old party. And then Jesus wraps up that parable with saying this, we had to celebrate and be glad, the father is saying to the son because this brother of yours was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. Jesus wants us to celebrate those who come to know him who were once dead in sin and now alive in Christ, who were once lost but are now found in Jesus, and we celebrate that. And then Jesus talks about the parable of the lost coin. He says right at the end, at the end he says this. Uh, by the way, the parable of the lost coin was this lady lost a coin, and it was very important for her to find that coin. And so she literally like moved furniture, dusted the corners. You know that once a five years thing we do at our house <laughs> and we hope to do it once a month. We say, oh, this feels good. We should do this once a month. And then we forget about it for another five years. And she moves all the furniture. She cleans all the dust bunnies and she, the entire house is clean until she finds that coin. Guess what? She found the coin. She was so excited about finding the coin. She calls up her friends. Well, they didn't have phones back then, but she, she Instagram her friends. She goes, I found the coin. But they didn't have oh, they didn't have Instagram either. See, you're, you're on it. I know, I'm just messing with that. And so she wants everyone to celebrate what was lost and is now found. Jesus is saying, 
He says this, in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There's celebration. Now, I want to make sure we understand what it looks like to celebrate. So I'm going to need some kids to come back up here again, and I think we're done with this one. So did I just read the scriptures that were supposed to be read? Four and five? Who has four and five? I'm so sorry. I read your scripture. You have five? You have five? That's actually the one I wanted to end with. Let her read it again. Yeah. Oh, Bethany. Yes. I, you didn't get off the hook. Whoever has four, I'm sorry. I just took your... Did you? I'm sorry, brother. Okay, read that one out again. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of... <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you read that again? <laughs> what is happening with that? <laughs> Can you hear me? Is it still I, doing it? Yeah, it is. But go ahead. It sounds cool. In this. <laughs> I think the batteries are going out. It's not a prank. Is this a prank, Randy? I think the batteries are going out. Hello? Just say it anyway. Just go for it. In the same way. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I This is great. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15:10. Thank you very much. Give it that up over Bethany. Anyways, this mic sounds weird permanently now. Oh, I don't know what happened. Did you drop it when you were running over there or something? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The only time I dropped it is when you it down. Oh, yeah, and that, that wouldn't do anything. Okay, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to make sure we know how to celebrate. If there's a kid, come on up here if you want to participate in this. And I need you to stand on the grass line facing everyone. Stand on the grass line facing everyone. Up. Yeah, everyone in front of you. Okay. Oh, I hope I have enough. Okay. So let's, let's try this. Hold that. Don't pull on that string yet. Don't pull on the string yet. Okay, actually, no, you can handle one of these. What do you think? Don't pull on that string yet. Where'd it go? Uh, hold that one. Thank you. The, it's okay. They're just roaming candles. I got them in Washington. I'll give this one to somebody. Thank you. Do you want to participate? No? Okay. Don't pull the string yet. 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 <laughs> Thanks. He's catching on. All right. Do you want one from there? You can have No. Okay. Okay. So we're going to... Oh, Isaac. Here you go. So here's the thing. Scripture says that there is rejoicing in heaven when even one sinner comes to know the Lord, comes to repentance. Uh, by the way, this is how this one works. Have you ever done one of these? It's a confetti cannon. Okay, so I'm going to peel that off, and basically, you're going to twist it at the count of three. You're going to go, and you're going to aim straight up. You're just going to twist, just like that, okay? Everybody, don't twist it yet in the count of three. Everybody else, you're going to get your, you see that little, this little thing here? On the count of three, you're going to pull that string, and, and don't, just point out, okay? Point out. Hold on, let me get this one ready down here, too. Did you, we have to pull this. I know, it's so big. I found him at, at, uh, at Walmart. It's so fun. Okay, so you're going to twist. Does that make sense? Okay. So wait, there is celebration in heaven when what happens? That's right. And so we're going to practice celebration right now as if somebody came to know the Lord Jesus as Savior because I'm sure somewhere around the world right now, someone just gave their heart to Jesus. And so on the count of three, we're going to party pop and everyone out here is going to be like, yeah, so you are going to celebrate with us, okay? Is everybody ready? You also have a part in this. You guys ready back there? You're going to hoot and holler and the neighbors are going to go, what is going on over there? Well, we're celebrating because this is stuff worthy of celebration, amen? All right. On the count of three, we're going we're gonna to celebrate. Everybody, one, two, three. Woo! Yeah. Wow. Good job. It didn't pop? Oh, wait, we got one going. Oh, no, is it a dud? Oh, yay. Good job. Good job. All right, you guys can all have a seat. Uh, the trash, you can put it in here. 
if you want. Thank you. Trash right here. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, did you just volunteer? Oh, let's not shake that just in case. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't want it to fall over. All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you. Now, oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You can put that in there too. It's all done. I know. It's like, please, more party. Come on. But nothing. You should never look down a cannon. <laughs> Don't do that ever. Okay. So that's our segue into our baptism service, by the way. <laughs> um, it's the idea of baptism is a symbol of a life change. It's a symbol of the commitment to follow Jesus. It is saying Jesus saves. It is saying I'm a part of the family of God, and it's a celebration of a life change. And so we're going to move into our baptism service. We have two guys that are going to be baptized this morning, and then we have folks that are going to read their testimony. And um, if after today you have given your life to Jesus Christ, but you've never made that public declaration, then I would love for you to come find me, meet with me, uh, send us a note, an email, and say, and I know that this is the next step in my faith with Jesus, and then we, uh, you want to be baptized in the Christian faith, and we're going to celebrate that with you, and come share with me that afterwards, and we'll, we'll chat, and we'll plan that out. That'd be awesome. We do have another baptism service coming up in September to celebrate again the things that God is doing. Isn't this awesome? If you are here this morning, and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, this is a wonderful day, an example of what God does when he comes into someone's life. And if you have never called on him, uh, today can be a day of salvation for you. And it's simple. Sometimes I'll use the double ABC. A, acknowledge God loves you. He's got a plan for you. And the second A is admit that your sin is in the way of that plan. And then B, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for your sins. And C, confess with your mouth that he is Lord and you will be saved. And so if you want to make that decision today and call on him, then we want to invite you into that. And so I'm going to ask everyone, just bow your heads as we close in a word of prayer. And if there is somebody this morning that wants to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, just raise your hand and say, Pastor Rex, that's me. I need to pray this morning to ask the Lord into my life. Anybody here that wants to pray that prayer? And we'll pray with you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day of celebration. Thank you for, for Anthony, for Aaron and their commitment to you and their testimony of what you've done in their lives. Father, I know that that speaks to every one of our hearts. And there may be somebody here today that doesn't know you as Savior. They didn't raise their hand, and that's fine. They don't have to raise their hand to know you as Savior. They just call on your name, and you are there, and you save. And so thank you for that. Lord, we continue to celebrate your goodness through this church May we continue to be an example to our community. May we reach with the love of God. And we thank you so much for your presence with us in this place. Thank you for your love. Lord, may we love and worship you back. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace today. You are sent. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's teaching at Pursuit Church. We pray that the teaching today will encourage your faith in Jesus Christ to draw you closer to Him and give you a better understanding of His Word. If there's a way that we can minister to you, pray for you, or encourage you in your faith, please reach out to us on our website, PursuitNazarene.org, and click on Connection Card. Also, you can share this video with others and encourage them. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.